what happened last class, you need to know that an electron is both a particle and a wave. So if you imagine the wave part of the particle, that follows some sort of function that's sinusoidal, meaning it can be followed by a sine or a cosine function. Okay? We describe it instead of with an f of x like in math, with a psi, psi of x. And that describes the function of the wave generated by an electron or existing as an electron. Okay? So that's just the psi. So then we looked at two possible cases. Case one in two dimensions, just as a thought process. So I gave you this equation, psi n of x is square root of 2 over l times sine n pi x over l. You won't really use that equation. Uh, I will do an example in just a bit that would be something more normal for you. OK, but I just wanted you to know that exists. And what you'll need to know about that is to determine nodes, n, and the wavelength of uh, l in terms of wavelength. 3D wave function. Uh, I told you last time you can, there's three variables in the spherical po polar coordinate system, r, theta, and phi. r is a distance from the origin, and theta and phi are two angles in three-dimensional space. And that can factor out into a radial part of the wave function and an angular part of the wave function, meaning the r's can literally be factored out of the angle part of the wave function. That's pretty complex. So it turns out that quantum numbers actually help us a lot. Quantum numbers actually find that sneak themselves into the wave function. And so instead of, and you probably remember last time, there's this big table uh, that's in your text and it's in the reader that's a little messy and it has a lot of functions. It's hard to plot those. And so instead of attempting to mess with those functions, if we know the quantum numbers, n, l, m sub l, specifically say l tells us the shape immediately. So we don't have to plot anything if we know it's a d orbital, meaning l is what number? If uh, a d orbital means l is what number? The number 2. So if we know that l is 2 or it's a d orbital, we automatically know it's a cloverleaf shape. So we'll practice drawing them in just a second, but that's the summary. The n tells us the energy and size, l tells us the shape, and m sub l, the orientation in space. So we're going to use quantum numbers to plot the wave function. Okay? We're going to use quantum numbers to draw out the wave function instead of attempting to plot it. That's the general concept from last time. 